It's Mr.'s voice. This video is slightly different. Instead of a normal home chemistry video, this one is a presentation because this process can't easily be filmed. It is the purification of sodium chlorate by Mysterious Voice Nyan Chemistry Meta John et al. During the post run, you have about 78% conversion because uh, that's if you're using ir iridium ruthenium electrodes, which is the most common type. That gives the uh, 80 gram per liter rules such that you know you won't end up with any decomposition of the uh, electrode caused by the dissolution of ruthenium because obviously that's not great. <coughs> now, the purification of sodium chloride chlorate can be done by either solvent extraction or fractional crystallization. Now the problem with solvent extraction is there's a risk of setting stuff on fire because you have a mixture of fuel and an oxidizer. In large amounts, this process is not preferred. Filtration has to be the very first step of this process to remove any precipitated calcium hydroxide after the run. Do not use filter paper to filter the solution, only cloth, because filter paper is going to dissolve due to the excess hypochlorites present. Single point fractional crystallization is where we only heat the solution to about 100 C and the moment crystals appear, we cool it down, which will allow only for the sodium chloride to stay in solution while the sodium chlorate crashes out because of the changing temperature. The changing temperature causes the solubility to vary a lot, as you can see in the graph below. Meanwhile, in sodium chloride, the uh, solubility barely changes, and that's to our favor. Otherwise, we get co-precipitation, which is not ideal, basically. Now, you can read the steps over here. I'm going to put this presentation as well in the uh, description, but overall, I'm going to sum it up. After you filter the cell, you just uh, you heat it up, crystals almost appear, or at least appear very little. You pour it in another container, you put it in the freezer, and you let it chill in the freezer until minus 10 or lower. Then you collect the crystals. Done. However, due to evaporative losses you or evaporation during the process, you end up with some sodium chloride getting mixed in with this product, hence why it's not ideal. Two-point fractional crystallization is a better method which results in higher purity. However, the amount of steps required is a little more. You know, just like in single point, you have to heat this stuff up, you know. And some amount of sodium chloride will then be crashed out, but just keep letting it crash out. Because you want to heat it up to a point at which you will have a lot of precipitate, but not to the point at which a slurry forms. The liquid is quickly filtered, and sodium chlorate will already be crashing out as it filters. And the sign of this is the moment you switch off the heat, a waxy, crystallizing, you know, layer starts appearing on the surface. That means that sodium chlorate crashes out rapidly. This is okay, though, because uh, we will recover the precipitated sodium chlorate later on in the next step. Anyway, this liquid is then filtered through, and the filtrate is then cooled just like in single point. But unlike in single point, because sodium chlorate will continuously crash out even during evaporation, most of the product you'll get will be sodium chlorate with very little chloride contamination. It is then put in the freezer like the previous step, and the same things apply, and you do the same thing over again. Now, the recovery of the retained precipitate is important because during both of these processes, you, or at least rather during two points, you end up with a filtrate cake and a filter cake and a slightly crusty filter due to the sodium chloride chlorate that precipitated on it, man. So the, the, what you got to do now is you got to solvent extract this if you want to retain some pure sodium chlorate for other purposes. I mean, most, mostly for the preparation of transition metal perchlo I mean, chlorates or even the purpose of preparing perchlorates. Anyway, solvent extraction is pretty straightforward. You 
it can either use ethanol or methanol for this with the solubility being given here. And, you know, this hot solvent is then used to extract the pre-dried material. Remaining solution of the filtrate is boiled off or slowly heated off. Yeah, very straightforward. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can find this anywhere else. And you can also recover it by converting it to potassium chlorate, which is the useless stuff. You know, there's one problem with potassium chlorate, though. The addition of potassium chloride to the... Uh, Redissolved filter cake will cause this to be unusable for future runs. So sadly, you gotta toss it out, which is not ideal. I also don't recommend putting any of this stuff in a future run because really, it can also decrease the effectiveness of the pH buffer, which is either calcium chloride or the other ones like exotic ones like magnesium chloride and aqueous aluminum chloride. Different types of electrodes. Well, I'm pretty sure you guys know what mixed metal oxide electrodes are. Well, there's actually two commonly available ones, iridium or ruthenium oxide. It's a mix of thermally decomposed modified titanium oxide with a bit of ruthenium and iridium oxide mixed with it. This is the most efficient electrode, but it suffers from issues past 78% conversion due to the uh, oxygen evolution at the anode causing the ruthenium tetroxide to be released by the oxidation of ruthenium dioxide. Now, that stuff is not good. That stuff will give you bone cancer. You don't want to deal with that, hence why we stop early before it even gets close to 40 grams per liter. A sign of this is your cathodes will suddenly turn black as the ruthenium dioxide redeposits onto the titanium or steel or whatever you use. So if you see this, you gotta treat that solution with extra care. Now, there's another type of electrode known as iridium tantalum. This is a much more resilient electrode that is slightly less efficient during pH controlled condition but can go from chloride to chlorate to even perchlorate at 100% conversion with no erosion, but the losses only occur in power and current efficiency. The efficiency of iridium tantalum is 80% compared to 89% for the other one. In non-pH controlled conditions, the efficiency is identical with either chromium or calcium chloride being added. Calcium chloride is added because even in a non-pH controlled environment, it forms a conductive layer of calcium hydroxide acting like a membrane, which is really good. That prevents the reduction of chlorate in the cathode, or rather hypochlorite, because technically that's what's causing the efficiency to be less than 50%. The reason why it's 50% is because you're oxidizing the hypochlorite instead of its dissociation with uh, hypochlorous acid or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, iridium tantalum, as good as it is, due to the low efficiency at the perchlorate cell, most people add a thin layer of lead dioxide by using a plumbate solution, which helps solve that. So if you're new to this process, I recommend getting the more expensive iridium tantalum oxide electrodes. And thanks for watching. Yeah, good job, people. You made it this far, y'all.